Good morning. We're here with John Comerford. He's the beef extension specialist. He's also our monthly beef columnist. He's been our beef columnist for many years, actually, which is great. So it's the first time we're going to get you on camera, John. And uh, so what are what are some producers talking to you about here at the show? What are some big issues that you think that the beef and cattle producers are going to face in the coming year here in Pennsylvania and around the Northeast? Well, the biggest issue that most beef producers are going to face in the coming months is feed cost. Uh, with the drought in the Midwest driving up the price of feed grains, which has an effect on all feeds at that point. And so their feed costs are going to go up. Uh, and in some cases, prices are under a lot of pressure. Uh, for example, feeder calf prices are under some pressure because of the price of corn going up the way it has. So uh, they're going to be faced with a couple of issues relative to costs and returns. Okay. Um, in talking with people yesterday so far, uh, are there any are there any sort of issues or problems that, that that producers are bringing to you that they're seeing besides you know sort of feed costs? Are there any any you know uh, disease or any sort of uh, you know care issues that they're facing? Well, what we're facing in, in, in a lot of these cases are you know they they want to know how can I overcome some of these feed cost issues. And a lot of them are looking at genetics as a way of doing that um, and trying to find a, a way to use information that is available for genetics, uh, selection in genetics, uh, so that they can overcome some of those issues. Uh, we're also looking at uh, ways that particularly cattle feeders can take a look at bunk management and feed storage and some of these kind of issues so that they can reduce that that loss of feed either through the uh, bunk or through the storage and, and feeding systems. Uh, so those are the kind of issues that are really front and center with them. Between feed costs and sort of the obviously with the drought, have you heard from or, or talked to a lot of producers who are sending a, sort of a higher percentage of their of their herd into the in, or into the stream than they might necessarily in other years? I've heard of a few producers that are selling some cows out of a cow herd, uh, and but most of the cattle feeders are, are replacing cattle as they sell them, uh, so their placements are still the same. Uh, but we are hearing about a few herds that are going out uh, and having to sell cows because they've used a lot of their winter feed during the drought period in the center, of the, in the middle of the summer. Uh, out in the Midwest, of course, in the, in the high plains, it's even worse because a lot of those cows are being uh, marketed because there's just not enough for them to eat in that region. If uh, if any beef or cattle producers wanted to head questions or wanted to, to ask you any, you know, ask for a follow-up, follow uh, where could they find you on the web or, you know? Sure. Our, uh, the Department of Animal Science, uh, search for the Department of Animal Science at Penn State. Uh, there is a link there to extension. There's a link there to a number of different publications and webinars and some information like that that they might find useful. Uh, and then they can always call me. Uh, my phone is always there, and it's 814-863-3661. Great. If they want to visit about it. That's awesome. Thanks, John. Okay. Thanks, Bob. of Rotomix uh, at Ag Progress 2012. Freddie, tell us a little bit about Rotomix. Well, Rotomix is a company that's based out of Dodge City, Kansas. We have two manufacturing facilities, one in Dodge itself and another in Pleasanton. Um, we are not only produce our product here in the U.S., but we also manufacture here in the U.S., which is kind of uh, unique in the industry today. Rotomix, uh, the original inventor of the mixer wagon, is Ben Nyer, our founder of our company. Uh, Rotomix itself was founded in 1984. And uh, we come today with a diverse product line of not only horizontal mixers for feed, we also have vertical mixers and other material handling and composting equipment. That's great. What do you uh, what, what 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 do you what do you have on display this year at at the show? Well, we have uh, not only vertical mixers, but we also have our horizontal mixer line. Uh, 
in the dairy market we have down here in Pennsylvania, which we're blessed to work within. Uh, that's one of our most selling features is the uh, vertical mixer and the horizontal mixer. Yep. Um, and that's what we've brought to, to show off today and showcase. Which, uh, which, which uh, are there any new models? Well, we have uh, some changes in current models. Yep. Uh, we're doing some things in production in the near future, so things might, uh, might or might not change, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, we, what we currently have is our vertical lineup, which we have an 1105, which is 1105 cubic foot wagon. Yep. And we also have our rotary lineup of mixer wagons, which go from uh, 270 foot.